everybody, thanks for checking out the video. Today we're going to be talking about some best practices and some tips and tricks to make your leap back tests more robust and something you can trust. Because I would not trust this back test right here. Now, it's got a couple good things going on for it, just conceptually. It's got a good number of trades, it's got a good time sampling, it's also got a ton of problems. Somebody might be very attracted to this on initial glance. It's got a, you know, <laughs> it's got a 99.7 win percent. I wouldn't believe it. This is a poorly set up back test. Let's take a crack. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down and hit these two things on the Punisher, which is our affectionate name for the miscellaneous options section at the bottom. Cap non-opening profits a profit target and require two consecutive hits a profit target while this is running. And the leap back tests take a little bit longer to run. You've got a lot of the options chain to cycle through and we're still using one minute data even though this is a leap. So cap non-opening profits at profit target simply functions like a limit order in the back test. So all of the data points after the initial data point of 932 are capped at your profit target, exactly what it says. So think of it as a limit order in the back test. If you have this back test has 20% on, if you had a trade on that had 20% on and you hit the profit at 1037 in the morning, it would just fill you at the profit target. It wouldn't wait till 1038 and look at the mid and fill you at that, which is what the back test is doing. So cap non-opening profits is a way of simulating a limit order. Possibly even more important is require two consecutive hits at PT. This is going to have an impact on this back test. I can guarantee it without even looking at it. I know it will. What that does is that makes sure that your min price was enough to hit the profit target two consecutive minutes in a row. And, and we're starting to look a little better. Still don't like it. Still don't trust it. It's a little bit better. Let's do a few more things. First of all, let's get rid of this contract cap. And we're going to change the allocation just because we're back testing this to give a more realistic back test. So we're going to get rid of the contract cap because that can hide your drawdowns. And there are pros and cons to using different setups to the back test. I don't want a contract cap on this and I don't want to cap it with a max allocation, which is another way of capping it. Um, I just want to look at the back test. So I'm going to do Let's do, th we'll do three quarters of a percent. That should pretty much let us buy uh, a 10 delta leap pretty much all the time, one or a couple. And we're going to bump it up to 100K. So we're going to run that. And this is going to change what it looks like because right now we only had one contract. And I say this in many videos, but it's really important to remember that your CAGR, your drawdown, and your MAR are all functions of how you set up the funds and allocations section of the back test. We have a whole video on funds and allocations. I will link it in the box below. Check it out. But MAR, which itself is just a derivative, it's just CAGR and drawdown. So all of those are going to be impacted when we make this change, when we uncap it, and then when we rerun it with a margin allocation instead of an artificial cap. So that's the second thing. So the first thing we did is we took an initial pass at the Punisher and we added two hits, cap profits. The second revision, the second whack we took to trim it down to a more realistic back test is removing the contract cap. Again, there are reasons why you might want one. That's not what I'm going to cover in this video. I still don't like it. And, um, but we're getting closer. And we still have a lot of data points, you know, still six years of data. What we need to do now is we need to look at these, the Punisher once more. And this is super helpful to look at the trade replay, right? You can see these, um, these moves, are, are, they, are, they, are they real? Are they, you know, you can see how closely the trade and the underlying are mirroring each other right here. But there's something else we need to do to make it a little bit more realistic and something that you can have confidence in because that's our goal. The first thing is you're probably going to have something for fees and commissions. Even a lot of the, here, here's something folks don't understand. A lot of the no fee brokers still, or no commission brokers, they still might have fees. So I have a no commission broker that I sometimes use. It's still 11 cents when you look in the fees. So I'm going to use 50, which is what a lot of people will pay 
for a single ETF option, something similar to that. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to put on some slippage. And actually, let's put on, we're going to put on two cents of entry slippage, three cents of exit slippage. And we're going to rerun this. Right now, it's got a MAR of 1.3. And we're going to rerun it with these. And so obviously, the commissions and fees, you're not trading it that often. So those are not going to have a huge impact. The slippage will have a bigger impact. Let me talk about slippage while we're running it. The entry slippage in this example is just going to be an addition to the debit. That's fairly clean. The exit slippage is what people don't understand. And we do slippage in a nuanced way at Option Omega. And so on this backtest, we have a profit target in the way exit slippage works. Just like in real life, if you've ever looked at a trade and you think, I'm at the mid, why am I not getting filled? That's because of liquidity. One of the reasons we really prioritize having a smaller number of tickers than some people want, but we prioritize highly liquid tickers because we want you to have confidence in the back test. So we don't want you to have to add a ton of excess slippage to every back test. So with this back test, we are putting on three cents of exit slippage. And the way it works is to get the profit target, you're going to have to get past the mid three cents before it will close. So what's interesting is this is still actually, this is not something I would trade and I'll talk about why I wouldn't, but we've been in quite a bull market and there are people who trade leaps on spy and you can see that in many years, it's been decently performing. Now, what are some of the downs? What are some of the upsides? So, I mean, it's got a high win rate, obviously, which people like. It's got a, a pretty decent capture rate. If you're targeting 20% and you're capturing 15.5%, it's pretty decent. What I don't like, why I wouldn't trade this back test and why I would want to keep tweaking on it, there's a couple things. Number one, again, you have to keep this in context. A drawdown of 5% when you're only all allocating three quarters to a trade, you are doing it every week, but you're only generating 5.3% CAGR. That's a MAR of 1.1, which in many, in many traditional finance circles, not in the backtesting options world, a MAR of 1.1, historically, a lot of people would like that. But in the options world, when you get into rigorous backtests, there's a lot of different examples you can find of much higher Mars with 1.1 when you have the portfolio allocation that you do, which again, you can't just look at the fact that it's three quarters of the portfolio. It's three, three quarters of the portfolio every Tuesday. So you're constantly putting on the portfolio. And what you see is you will have times when, you know, your profit targets will double up. So here you go. It, it, it took out a couple profit targets here took out a couple profit targets here. On the whole though, the back test is very consistent. You know, here's a couple profit targets here. So you can see these days when we had pumpage, you, you, uh, you, hit, you hit a couple profit targets, you'd be feeling pretty good. And some of the drawdowns, you know, they get a little spicy. You can see that I have the max loss turned on here. So you can see the drawdown. But again, not something I would trade. But when I look at this back test versus the initial back test, I just have more confidence in it. I just do. And the reasons why we added a realistic fee schedule, we added some amount of slippage. Now, there's also people that might say this is too low for slippage. Even on SPY, they might want to see more than three cents. SPY is the most liquid options ticker by volume every day, like 90 plus percent of the days. Occasionally, you have a day where the queues might eclipse it, or if Tesla's having earnings, they might eclipse it. But SPY is, in general, the most liquid options ticker. So that's why folks like to test it, not nearly as much as they test SPX on Option Omega, but they do test it. It's the second most common ticker that we have. So confidence, we added some fees and we added some slippage, we uncapped the allocation so we can see the drawdown, and we added both cap profits and two hits at profit target. So these are some things that you wanna keep in mind if you are running a leap back test. You wanna keep in mind the punisher. So again, the miscellaneous option at the bottom of option omega, that is the punisher. I will link the making friends with the punisher video but making your back test worse using the Punisher can result in better 
back test. So, and I will, I can save this back test um, here and I will post this if you want to play around with it a little bit more. And this isn't one that, <clears throat> that I would trade, but if you want to use it as a starting point and generate your own back tests, that's what we link it for. So thank you as always. Drop us a comment, send us a message on Discord. And of course, if you like and subscribe the video, that really helps us. So thank you very much. Have a great one.